Now, first of all, this is a question that I immediately recognize as uh, one for my strategy, plug points into equations because they're very clearly giving us a bunch of equations in the answer choices. And yes, there are dots on this graph and those might seem like the points that matter, but they're not because all of the equations are supposed to be the line of best fit. So it's actually just the, the line that I care about. The dots are just a distraction. So I can take a nice point off of the line, plug it into the choices and just see what fits. But I wouldn't do that here because the answer choices are presented in such a nice, convenient way. They're basically written in the standard uh, linear equation format that I want and that I'm used to. So this is a y equals mx plus b. The only little trick they pulled here is they flipped it so that the b part is first, and we know that because the x is definitely second. So this is another important idea if we are memorizing formulas, like the formula for a line, that sometimes they kind of rearrange things. But what matters is not the numbers, or not the letters, or not where they are, but like how the thing is built and how it operates. So I know that the x is going to always be attached to the slope. And just looking at this line, I can tell that I have a negative slope, right? It's going down, that's negative. So the only ones that have negative slopes are going to be uh, B and D, right? That negative 0.8. So I'm not actually gonna need to calculate what the slope is, it's just very obvious that it's negative from the picture. Similarly, I can think about the, the B portion, which is the Y-intercept. And again, I don't need to calculate it because the only difference now between uh, choice B and choice D is the negative. So where does it hit the y-axis? It It's on the positive side, right? This whole thing is the positive x and y. So it's positive 13.5, so b is the answer. I would not have used plug points into equations here. But if you were in any way unsure, you could pick a point off of this thing, something that's kind of hitting a nice part of the grid, and then plug that in. So this would be the point 87, and then you could plug it into the answer choices. So 13.5 plus 0.8, times eight, this is where the calculator would come in, 13.5 plus 0.8 times eight would be 19.9. So we know now that this is not the right answer because what we were supposed to get was seven, right? So the fact that we got a very different number is not good. Now if we do that for the right answer, 13.5, here I'll write it too, 13.5 minus 0 0.8 times eight, minus 0.8 times eight, we get not quite seven, 7.1, but that's okay because we did estimate here and so it makes sense that we would be a little off, right? I'm kind of looking at where the line hits the grid, but you know, would I really notice with my eye if it was a 0.1 difference? Probably not. Um, so either way is, is a, you know, a good way to get this. You know, you could get the answer if you continued through the answer choices uh, and just to make sure, uh, you can still get choice B using plug points into equations but it's definitely more tedious, it's got more arithmetic, and you really do need to know how y equals mx plus b works, and you need to be able to recognize that equation when it's kind of jumbled up, because they will do that just to kind of throw you off, but it's a very important equation for the SAT, and sometimes it's all we need to kind of compare a graph to an equation and pick the right answer.